Good afternoon guys. Today we're going to be taking a quick look, doing an unboxing and a quick review of the Rode VideoMic by Rode Microphones. Now as you can see from the box, this is a Rode VideoMic directional video condenser microphone. It has a 10 year warranty from Rode. It is a studio quality condenser microphone that takes a 9 volt battery, has a built in shock mount on it, it has a 3.5 millimeter mini jack output, one quarter and three eighths inch threads, as well as a cold shoe mount, and like I said before, a 10 year warranty. Now you'll notice the box doesn't have any sort of foil on it, nothing holding it closed. Uh, it came like that in the box from Amazon. A little bit odd, I guess maybe this one doesn't come wrapped, but uh, I opened it up earlier just to make sure everything was inside. Indeed, everything is there. So let's go ahead and open the box and just see what comes inside of it. There we go, we'll put the top off to the side. Here we have the quality assurance checklist. This just shows what has been tested and all of that fun stuff. Uh, these items down here at the bottom have been checked in QA. So you've got the pop windshield, rubber bands available, the manual warranty card, the barcode on the box, and the barcode on the microphone itself. Nothing else was tested, so good to know. In the box we've also got a Rode microphone certified and authorized sticker. So if you wanted to put that on something, make it look a little cooler, that's a way to do it. You've got the way to register for your 10 year warranty, which I will be doing as soon as I test this out and make sure I'm going to keep it. And the instruction manual with different specification information, the way to power it, mounting it, installing the battery, all of those very useful things. And now we get to the meat of the device, the majority of the rest of the package, the microphone itself. So let's just go ahead and pull that out. Oh look, something else fell out. If I remember correctly, these are additional shock mount brackets that you can attach if one breaks or if one falls off or something. But let's go ahead and just pull this out. And there you have it. That is the microphone. Here we have the windscreen on the front. We've got the main area where the 9-volt battery would go, the 9-volt compartment. Inside of there, we have the ability, using these two little dip switches that you probably can't see, to change it from the 0 decibel output to a negative 10 or negative 20 decibel output. Put the cover back on. Here on the back we've got the on off switch and a third setting for a high pass filter to filter out low frequencies, rumbles, things like that. We have the shock mount here that when you tap it it does cause the shock mount to move just a little but it doesn't hurt the microphone in any way. We have our cable which doesn't have a whole lot of cable to it but hopefully enough to go from the mic to the camera. A little bit of stretchiness to it. I'll probably buy an extension because my camera does not have a cold shoe mount on it. It has the mini advanced accessory mount. I have the uh, the Canon Vixia HF21 so it does not have the full cold shoe mount. However, uh, this hopefully will be the 1 quarter and the 3 8 inch so I'll go ahead and try that out on my boom mic stand and we'll see if it works. Okay, well after doing some reading I probably should have done before ordering the mic I've discovered that it has a 1 quarter and a 3 inch jack, just like I thought it did. My mic stand, however, does not. <laughs> My mic stand's a 5 eighths inch. It's really not a big deal, I just have to run out to the music store and pick up an adapter. For the time being, though, one of the lights that I have has the one... I guess it has the 3 eighths inch mount, so I've got it mounted on there. I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick test of the audio before and after. So we're going to do a quick cut, and I'm going to have uh, the audio just with the microphone on, plain, no, no settings changed or anything. So this is the mic directly plugged in, just in the on position with no additional changes made, no high pass, it's got the windscreen on it that came with it, no decibel changes within the mic or anything, and no, ch no settings changed on the camera itself. And this is the mic on the high pass setting, which should take out a little bit of rumble, it might take out my buzzing of my computer in the background, some things like that. Again, just testing this out to see how the quality measures up against the built-in camera microphone. Hopefully there will be significantly less uh, echo from the room, because that's a lot of what I'm hearing from my built-in mic. So I just watched back those clips. Uh, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of difference between the high-pass and the normal settings. A decent amount of difference between the camera with no mic, and or, well, the camera with the internal mic, and the camera with the Rode mic. So let me know what you think about the, the quality differences in the comment section below. If you want to compare it to the USB mic that I was using before, which uh, the main reason for purchasing this again, well, if I had mentioned it, was so that I don't have to sync the audio in post-production. Uh, I can just use a decently high-quality mic uh, in pre-production and not have to do any additional, additional syncing type work. So let me know again what you think in the comment section below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll talk to you later.